Entrepreneur Sandbox, and the True Initiative. My name is Michelle Chung, and I'm the director at True, a nonprofit with the mission to create tech-enabled jobs in Hawaii. I wanted to provide quick introductions to the organizations behind this effort. The first is HEDC, which is a state agency attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Their mandate is to grow the technology economy and workforce here in Hawaii. The second is Entrepreneur Sandbox, which is a co-working facility in Kaka'ako, owned by HEDC and managed by our partner, Box Jelly. For more information, please visit sandboxhawaii.org. And the last one is True. It's a joint effort amongst private and public sectors together with the state of Hawaii to encourage knowledge sharing and adoption of technology and innovation to create a resilient and thriving Hawaii. True is an initiative of the Hawaii Executive Collaborative. If you're interested in learning how you or your organization can be part of True, please visit us at hec.org slash true. Some housekeeping rules before we dive in. The session will be recorded and will be sent to all the guests who registered today. Please feel free to send in your questions during the session through the chat function. We'll address them during Q&A portion of this webinar. Today, we have the privilege of speaking to Adrian Chi, Senior Vice President and Division Manager of Information Technology at Central Pacific Bank. Adrian's a leader that's taken innovation seriously. Innovation means imagining something new, a fresh idea which hasn't been done before. The same concept applies to banking and with over 30 years of experience in banking technology, Adrian is a key member helping to drive innovation at Central Pacific Bank. Adrian has experience in managing complex technology projects, strategic implementations, and company collaboration. In 2019, Adrian led the transformation of the bank's collaboration platform, introducing a new way of working for CBP employees. Adrian is deeply rooted in Hawaii and no stranger to hard work, helping her family in Kona when she travels every year for harvest season to lend a hand. She earned a Bachelor's of Science degree with HPU and serves on the board for Junior Achievement of Hawaii. Adrian, welcome. Hey, Michelle. Good Hello. afternoon. Thanks for having me. <laughs> welcome to Women <laughs> in Tech. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us. Oh, I, it's my privilege. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, thank you for, for having me, you know, join and be a speaker in this, uh, in your Women in Tech series. I really no, appreciate it. No, no, not at all. Uh, why don't we start off by telling, um, can you share what you do at Central Pacific Bank? Oh, yes. I, <laughs> I'm happy to. Okay, let's see. So, um, yes, I'm the Senior Vice President and IT Division Manager here um, at Central Pacific Bank. Uh, I'm responsible for man the management um, strategy and execution of IT infrastructure, um, while at the same time implementing technologies that innovate and fortify the bank's overall strategic vision. Uh, let's see, I oversee technical projects in alignment with organizational goals, and I'm also responsible for directing the effective delivery of networks, IT development, and IT disaster recovery systems and processes. Well, I should lot. have asked you. It was. <laughs> I should have asked you what you don't do. <laughs> <laughs> that might be, that, that might have been easier. <laughs> you know what, with all the things that you have to focus on, do you have a way to prioritize what you focus on and what you implement? Yeah, so, you know, generally um, for, for, for IT, it's been, you know, our prioritization and, of implementations have been around um, you know, first and foremost, uh, risk and compliance to the organization, mm -hmm. um, and then followed um, closely behind, you know, strategic alignment. And so those have been the, the, the really the drivers behind, you know, our priorities of, of implementing any new technology. Got it. And with all the projects, some must be more fun than others. <laughs> Can you share some <laughs> of the solutions that you're working on at Central Pacific Bank that are on the interesting or exciting side for you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, right now, um, I have to say the most exciting um, project that I'm working on and, and have been a privilege to lead is um, around AI for call center. 
Um, and you know what this is is really it's the introduction of AI and machine learning and and robotic technologies into the call center platforms. Essentially, you know, um, augmenting our human our human resources, our agents with machine resources um, mm -hmm. to handle the easy and repetitive um, transactions, so that our agents can actually focus on uh, more complex transactions um, w with our customers. So it's exciting, you know, we're doing new and exciting things with it. We're, we're introducing live chat shortly. Um, you know, right now it is, it is rolled out to our internal support desks and, um, you know, eventually and soon we hope to be rolling it out also to our external facing um, contact center. That's great. And then I noticed that um, you guys came out with a new mobile app and you're doing yes. a lot of innovative things. Is there, <laughs> there seems to be like a renewed focus uh, of innovation at Central Pacific Bank. Can you share a little bit more about yeah. that? Yeah, and, and, and it's an exciting time for the bank, um, but, but definitely the IT culture here at the bank has taken a dramatic shift um, towards innovation. And, and you know, this shift occurred about, you know, a year ago before COVID hit. And so it's not something that we just mm -hmm. started this year. Um, but, you know, we were definitely lucky. We were definitely lucky that um, we got into innovating um, as, soon, as quickly as we did. Um, you know, first and foremost, you talked about um, our collaboration platform, and, and we did that last year. Again, a new, uh, you know, just in time, giving us a new way of working, um, giving, again, you know, being able to keep us connected. Um, but, you know, this shift um, was definitely the result of great forward thinking and leadership of our executive um, leadership team here at the bank. You know, they opened the opportunities for innovation, creating new ways of working here at the bank and, and just inspiring our employees to be innovative and share ideas in terms of um, efficiencies or improvements that can help make, move the bank forward, but also improvements that can help, um, you know, with, with driving better customer experience. I love that. So are some of those innovations bottom up as well as top down? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. So we all have a voice. Yeah. <laughs> we all have a voice. It, it's a great time <laughs> to be working for Central Pacific Bank. <laughs> no, that's really wonderful. And then it seems like it, it came just in time with the pandemic. Um, how has yes. the pandemic impacted your work and your teams? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's been interesting. So, so definitely with the pandemic, um, you know, there's been, there's been negative impacts and there's been positive impacts. I think, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for, you know, impact directly to technology, um, you know, it's negative impacts around technology has been around, you know, um, crisis management and response planning and, you know, which doesn't take into account the, the uncertainty of, of, an evolving pandemic, right? And so you can be prepared as much as you can be, um, but even around workforce management, right? Managing what functions can be done off-site versus on-site. And, and for those that must remain on-site and having the right technology to enable, um, you know, them to work safely. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's um, for, for, our, for my team, the pandemic has really put a lot of dependency on, on our infrastructure and making sure that it can mm -hmm. handle the changes because of the pandemic, the demands for working remotely or even um, working safely on site. So, you know, we've been busy. It's been, um, it's been good busy. You know, we've been able to, to help our teams work safely from home while still being productive, but we've also been able to still, you know, keep the infrastructure and lights on and, and, you know, technology moving forward um, to make sure that that people working on site are safe and that we can still work to deliver, um, you know, customer experience, you know, good customer service and experience to our to our customers. Yeah, it sounds like a big job to be able to pivot so quickly, and that yeah, you know, the firefighting and then mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So definitely, you know, definitely the pandemic has has impacted people and technology, you know, both mm -hmm. professionally and personally. Got it. It sounds like you have a big job. <laughs> I wanted to learn more. 
I wanted to learn more about how you landed in this all-encompassing role. Can you share a little bit of your um, career journey and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, you know, I, you know, other people have much more interesting stories, but you know, um, you know, for for me, I started. You know, it's been thirty-four. Michelle, I made thirty-four years this year. Um, you know, with, <laughs> with, <laughs> thirty-four years. <laughs> And even today I say, oh, wow, you know, I've been in this role, you know, in this, in this business of a te technology business for 34 years. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it started, I started back in 1986 um, as a part-time, um, as a part-time worker and full-time college student. And so, you know, because I was attending college in downtown um, at Hawaii Pacific University, it afforded me the opportunity to be able to jump from class to work. Um, in between. Mm -hmm. I still don't know how I did it, you know, with being a, a full-time student athlete and, and still trying to work and get, get hands-on um, experience. But, you know, yes, yeah, so I started as, as a college student working part-time. Um, I actually started as a IT data processing clerk. Oh. And even till today, I still don't know what that job was, except that I knew that I had to do whatever people told me to do. <laughs> and so, so I just want to make sure that, that I did it well, you know, that I, I, you know, I always believed that I was an important role in, in helping others achieve their jobs and finish their, their work. So, you know, it included, you know, um, cleaning up the computer room or, um, you know, running reports or making copies, you know, I, Pretty much I was doing whatever they told me to do. And, and I actually enjoyed it. You know? um, and then after graduating from college, um, you know, the bank hired me on full time um, as a desktop technician. And I thought, whoa, this is exciting. You know, mm -hmm. um, I actually get to get in there and, and work on PCs. Um, and so, you know, I, I spent several years as a desktop technician. Um, Fixing PCs and you know hardware and software, um, supporting users, um, and then slowly from there through the years, working my way up to a, a network technician, um, to a systems engineer, and then you know finally be more be, finally um, moving into um, a supervisory and manager role um, within the IT you know the IT space. And then 34 years later, um, you know, in this senior leadership role um, here at the bank. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's been through the ranks. It's been continuous learning and hard work and commitment and, you know, continuing to just just um, stay focused and, you know, help wherever I can and, and make sure I do my job um, to help others um, be able to achieve their goals. I love that you started ground up. Do you think that makes you a stronger leader? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I think it certainly helped me to understand um, mm -hmm. what, you know, what is, is required in roles, be, uh, you know, under me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, all of those experiences continue to play a big role in, in how I can offer uh, my services mm -hmm. to my team members, whether it is fixing a problem or helping them, you know, to organize around a project, um, you know, creating project plans or, um, try to hit goals. Uh, I, I think all of that experience from the ground up has definitely um, helped me to be, be, be empathetic as well mm -hmm. um, with them, you know, and, and the work that they have to do. Got it. And then with the benefit of 2020 hindsight, are there some attributes or skill sets that help to get you to where you are today? You know, um, yeah, I think uh, I, I you know, there's so many attributes around, um, you know, around, I guess around leadership in and mm -hmm. of itself, I guess is the best way to, to say it. You know, there's, you know, we talk about transparency and commitment and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think um, for me, a lot of, I think a lot of my success, um, you know, I think a lot of my success um, in terms of climbing you know, getting to where I am really comes from, I attribute it to my, to my father, to the upbringing by my father. You know, he always said, um, if you want to get noticed and get promoted, that, you know, you have to do your job above and beyond expectations. And when you're done with that, do more, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I used to look at him like, do more. 
I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> and, but he would say, yes, he would say, do more, you know, do more and keep doing more. I mean, he always said, you know, hard work and commitment always produces results, right? Everything produces a result. But the quality of the result really depends on how well you do your job mm -hmm. and, and how well you do your work. And so a lot of my success, you know, today and my attitude towards my professional career, my commitment, you know, I attribute all of that to, to I think, the, the upbringing with my father, through my father. Mm -hmm. That's inspirational. I, um, <laughs> so you and I, we know each other from before, true, That's and before right. Women in Tech. And I just have to say that I've always admired your leadership style. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but when we sat together at boot camp, <laughs> AWS boot camp, um, you got a call and it was a help desk call. And I was like, oh, how come you're taking a help desk call? Do you remember this, Adrian? I remember that, yeah. You remember? So <laughs> it was that leadership style. You're like, well, you know, we've been getting a lot of calls on the weekends and I wanted to understand why. And you right. like dove in, sleaze up. <laughs> to support your team. So I just have to tell you that's to me, that's what a leader is, right? One that can jump in. Do you have, I don't know, yeah. can you share what your leadership style is beyond um, that example? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this has always been a tough question um, for me. And so it's something that, you know, I, I, I don't know that I could pin myself down to just a particular single leadership style. Um, so, you know, if I had to sum it up um, in my own way, I would say that, you know, my, my style is a blend of, of several different types of leadership styles, right? And generally, it's depending on the circumstances and situations. You know, IT is such a demanding world. Um, and in different situations, you know, you almost have to be um, ready to lead differently, depending on the circumstances. And so for me, I, I noticed that, you know, what, depending on what's going on, my style will shift. Mm -hmm. And so if I have to pick, if I have to pick, you know, maybe the top three or four styles, um, you know, I would say, it, you know, it's a blend of um, autocratic, um, authoritative, um, some democratic and, and even some coaching, you know, mm -hmm. so again, it, it, it just depends on the situation. Um, I think that's a question best suited for, for maybe people that work for me. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I think they would have different views, but you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, for me, that's always been a question and what really is my style. And, and I guess it just depends on the circumstances. No, oh, that makes perfect sense. And I, I know <laughs> that you've worked with a lot of different leaders. Um, do you yes. see, what attributes do you um, associate with an effective leader? Um, gosh, you know, I've had in my journey, I've had the opportunity to work with so many great leaders, um, effective leaders. And, you know, there are so many attributes for effective leadership, you know, um, mm -hmm. as, as, you know, being good communicators, decision, ability to make decisions, right? Um, transparency and empathy. Um, but for me, I think, you know, strong effective leadership has very distinct um, attributes. And, and for me, that is, um, you know, really somebody who has the ability to inspire others. Mm -hmm. um, they're creative and innovative, and they're committed and passionate to what they do, right? And then, um, you know, they have vision and purpose um, in, in everything that they do. And, and um, they're resilient, you know, they're resilient such that, you know, when things get tough, you know, they're able to get to get everyone going, right? They're able to rally the troops and, and move everyone in the same direction. And then, um, you know, they also have the ability to connect with people emotionally. And I think that's mm -hmm. so important. Um, so, you know, there are many, but those are the attributes that I, you know, I aspire to, you know, every day, um, but have had the privilege to work with those types of leaders. Um, mm -hmm. And even today within our organization. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I feel like, um, you know, leadership styles change, technology is constantly changing. Yeah. How do you keep up with all of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, 
So it's definitely not, you know, some people will say, you know, work-life balance. I suck at work-life balance. Okay. <laughs> I just, I am so bad at work-life balance. Um, and I'm still trying to learn that today, but, um, you know, keeping up with, um, with technology and keeping up with the industry, um, you know, it's, it's just continuous learning. I think it's just being open to learning and learning from anyone and everyone, um, you know, and, you know, I am not, a, not ashamed to learn from people younger than me. Last year during the summer, we had, um, we had, you know, four interns um, from local colleges here on Island and, um, they help work on this AI for call center solution. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much from them, um, you know, during the summer, just about, you know, AI in and of itself. I mean, that was a whole new arena for me. And, you know, through my, um, you know, my working with them over the summer, I, you know, I learned a lot about AI and machine learning and what, what is robotics, you know, what's mm -hmm. involved in all of that, that technology within that space. But, yeah, you know, for me, I think it's just being open to continuous learning, never stop learning, never stop being open to learning um, new things. I think every day I try to, I, my one goal is to learn some, one thing new, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's work related or personal, I have to learn one thing new and I cannot end my day without learning one thing new. So um, yeah, you know, so I think keeping up with technology, um, it's all about continuous learning. But the other thing I've always admired about you is that you have really strong relationships. <laughs> yeah, is that is that yeah. a focus or is does that come naturally to you <laughs> with things that you do to You know, um I I do have a lot of relationships. I've been fortunate to have a lot of good relationships, you know, both personally, mm -hmm. um, but even professionally. I, I have a lot of um, you know, comrades um around the bank that I mm -hmm. lean on quite a bit. And, um, you know, and, and I, you know, part of the relationships is working hard and, and listening to people and being able to, um, you know, provide help or advice or technology for that matter, whenever they need it. And so, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get here today. I wouldn't be here today without the relationships from people um, that I've met along my career journey. Um, and so I, I try to make sure that I maintain those relationships as strong as I can and lean on those relationships when I need help, but also to be there, um, you know, for them if they need help. And, you know, um, I've always been a people person. I love meeting people. I love talking story with people. And so, um, so yeah, I guess, you know, relationships do come naturally for me. And, and um, you know, and, and I do, I do value all of the relationships that I make, you know, and, and and gain along the way. No, yeah, thank you for sharing so much of your career journey and and all in banking. Um, it's <laughs> it's really cool. I'd like to pivot to get you to know you a little bit better on the personal side. Of sure. all the things, yeah, of all the things that you've done, what accomplishment are you most proud of, and why? Wow. Okay. So um, that's one that I that that I think about all, all the time. And, and actually, you know, my, my proudest accomplishment, I think is, is raising my two sons um, and, and seeing where they are today as, you know, young, successful young men. Um, but I think more importantly, it's being a role model as a woman leader for the both of them, you know, and so, through watching me and my hard work and, and what I do every day professionally, you know, both of my sons are very supportive of women leaders. Um, they are strong proponents of, for placing more women in, in leadership, you know, in, in positions of power and leadership. Um, and, you know, proudly, I, I am happy to, to, to share that they both have um, mentors today that are women leaders. Um, and, and I was very proud of that. You know, I was very proud that, you know, um, that they're less when, when they went out to, you know, look for, for mentors in the community um, to help them with their professional journey. I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see their list and, and their list was equally, um, you know, an equal amount of, of women and men, you know, so, so I was very proud of that, 
And mm. then I was very proud that they, they finally picked their mentors and they were women. <laughs> no, that is really cool. And I think that um, we all have a role in our, in our families also, right? To show Absolutely. leadership in a, a specific way. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so I always associate with the banking career with one that's being very demanding. How did you mm -hmm. um, balance having a career and raising your sons? So, you know, I'd like to say that it was strategic, Michelle, but, <laughs> you know, in all honesty, I think I was just lucky. You know, I, I and what I mean by that is, um, you know, I met my best friend in high school. And today he's actually my husband. And, you know, he equally shared the responsibility of raising our children. Um, you know, it wasn't, he, it, the burden was just wasn't on me as, as the mother. Um, you know, we, we have, like I mentioned, we have two boys. Um, you know, they are the joy of our, of our lives, of our hearts. Um, but, you know, my husband and I worked um, hard together, uh, you know, on, our professional careers, on our personal lives. We supported each other. Um, but my husband has always been my biggest supporter um, in my professional career. And so, um, you know, on top of just supporting each other, um, you know, just, just the two of us um, supporting each other in our professional careers, we also, and I also had um, the privilege of family members that helped to fill in when, um, you know, my husband wasn't there or, or I couldn't be there. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, I want to say it was strategic. I think I was just lucky. I was lucky to find, you know, my husband and, you know, him being, you know, a big supporter and, and sharing in the responsibility of raising, of raising family while still supporting both of our careers. Yeah. I think I'm going to take that clip and send it to him. <laughs> replay, replay. <laughs> no, that's really nice to hear. It's, it is a partnership, right? That it is. I, I remember being in the banks in the nineties, in the late nineties. I, I was in New York city. So I don't know if it was different in Hawaii, but I was one of the only women in the room. It was a very male dominated in technology I was just wondering, did you face any challenges being in a male dominated industry? You know, you know, it's interesting. So, so let me, let me share, you know, growing up and, and I, I played sports a lot um, growing up and, um, you know, believe it or not, every sports team I played on <laughs> growing up was with boys. Mm -hmm. I, all the way until my high school career, I played on all boy teams, whether it was basketball or baseball. Um, you know, I played a few years of softball, which of course were all girls. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until I got into high school where, um, you know, I had no choice but to be on, on women teams. And so um, I think high school was my, my first time that, that I, you know, I actually, um, it was tough for me because growing up, it was all, I was always surrounded by men, always mm -hmm. surrounded by males. And so in my career, being around men and working with men actually helps me to thrive, um, which is, you know, and I think is a lot of it was because of, of my upbringing and, and, you know, the, the activities and um, that, that I did, you know, being just on all boy teams. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, it was different. It was different. Um, I, you know, thrived in, in a male dominant um, arena and I had just the opposite effect of <laughs> being, being with women. You know? yeah, no, <laughs> I think women, 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 yeah, we, there was just a lot more emotion, you know, for me and, and it was tough for me to, to navigate mm -hmm. that. But, um, but, you know, I think I'm, I'm there now. And, and mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have that many challenges in a male dominant arena. That's great to hear. And then I, I know that yeah. Central Pacific Bank has a, a women's lean-in group. Yes. Is that right? Can yes. you share a little yes. bit about that? I, when I was at City, I credited my growth with a women's group that, that was yes. just a network and a share. But I'd love to hear about 
your lean in group? Yeah, so so we do have a lean in um, lean in circles um, program here at the bank. It started a few years ago with the support um, of our president Catherine No, okay. and um, you know the the program actually what, what the program does is it brings women um, a group of women leaders uh, in the bank together, and what we do is we spend time helping each other um, to build skill you know build skills leadership skills. Um, networking skills, and then helping each other just to achieve our, you know, our goals, um, both professionally and, and personally. For me, um, you know, I learn something every month. We have monthly meetings, and every month it's a new topic. Um, it's, it's interesting topics, and, you know, it, every meeting, um, you know, it just teaches me something new. For example, taking care of myself and, and time for myself, um, managing conflict, you know, facing adversity, or even, um, you know, leading teams during, um, during this, these extraordinary times. You know, how do, how do we do that? And then most recently, just, you know, um, a sense of discovering our own purpose. And so it's comforting to have a group um, of comrades in, in my corner and that I can tap on and, and seek help, you know, from any time um, on, and on anything, on anything that, you know, that I want to talk about. No, that's, I think it's wonderful that the organizations do that. Um, and then along every road, there are challenges and bumps. Did you, were there any challenges that you faced along your career? Yeah, so, you know, for me, I think um, the biggest challenge, challenge for me has been around self-criticism. Mm -hmm. I am my worst critic, right? I obsess about all the things that, that I could have done better, that, or, you know, that I should have done differently. And, you know, um, it's, it's just, I think that's been my, my biggest critic. And I think because um, I've been in an arena where it's so predominantly male, um, I, I set a standard for myself, you know, to always, um, work hard and, and try to keep up, you know, and try to keep up. And like I said, I, I, I do a lot of self-criticism and I think that's, um, that's, that's one of the things that I, I still continue to work on and I still am learning how to, you know, manage that much better. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're, we are, we're our, wor our worst critics, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Adrian, for sharing. That was really um, genuine. Is there any other, do you have any advice for people who maybe want to get started in a technology career or in the banking field? Um, yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, getting you know, if you want to get into technology, into banking, certainly reach out, network with people who are in the field, ask a lot of questions. Um, you know, technology and banking um, is, gosh, it's, you know, it's fun, it's innovative, it's um, constantly changing. Um, but part of technology and banking, you know, is also understanding banking as well. Um, and so, you know, if, if people are looking to, to be involved or get into this career field, I mean, the best advice that I can offer is, um, you know, to really network and talk to people, understand what it's like, get hands-on um, experience, um, you know, wherever you can. It's, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a fun field. It's, um, you know, demanding, um, but at, you know, at the same time, rewarding as well, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now I'd like to open it up to questions. If you do have a question for Adrian, please put it in the Q&A section. Um, and then we can, we can grill Adrian some more. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adrian, are there areas um, in technology that you're exploring now? I know you shared AI for call center. Are there any other interesting mm -hmm. ones that you're looking at? 
Yeah, um, actually, it's, you know, robotic process. AI is one, one field, um, one area, but robotic process automation, we're doing um, some work today uh, in using robotics to automate back office processes. Um, and then, um, you know, just a lot of, um, of, you know, we're doing a lot of uh, exploring around technologies that can help um, you know, enhance the customer experience um, in terms of our customer strategy. But, you know, and those things are like um, online chat um, and, you know, automation in terms of, of, you know, providing better customer experiences. So um, just, you know, robotics, in, um, artificial intelligence. Um, oh, and then, you know, of course, um, machine learning, right? How, mm -hmm. you know, ha having the machine learn in the background about your business and work that you do so that it can play a role in, in enhancing, you know, our customer service delivery as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What, um, how do you keep up with newer technologies? Do you have like a go-to source? Yeah, actually I do. Um, and it's Gartner. We use, I, I have a subscription with Gartner today. And uh, I spend a lot of time on, on you know, on our, in the Gartner portal, talking to Gartner analysts. Um, you know, that's my quickest go-to. Um, if I hear something emerging coming up, I'll jump in to the portal mm -hmm. and, and do research, do a lot of my own research. And, um, but also, you know, also reach out to, to and schedule analyst calls as much as I can. They're quick 15 to 30 minute calls, but very informative. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, I have a comment from Naomi. She loves the suggestion for learning something new every day. For those of us who, <laughs> who are trying to learn a new technical skill but don't have the opportunity to use it in the current job, how can we gain experience and credibility in that new skill? You know, um, I think there's a lot of resources, um, learning resources, tools, um, you know, depending on your um, funding resources. Um, for me, I you know, I'll pay for a lot of, um, if I see something interesting that comes across, whether I get a communication through my, my email or, um, you know, just through friends, um, through conversation, I'll look into it right away. And if I, you know, if it's something that, that fits within my budget, I'll make sure that, you know, I, um, uh, you know, register and, and apply and attend. Um, but, you know, I, I use a lot of YouTube also. I, there's a lot of stuff you can mm -hmm. find on YouTube. That's a great source. Um, you know, the internet, different publications, doing a lot of um, internet searching, talking story, um, you know, attending, you know, networking as much as you can, finding out um, who people are and what they do. LinkedIn has been a great source for me. Mm. Um, you know, making a lot of contacts. You can find a lot of people in different um, professional careers that, you know, generally I'll reach out. If I see something that might be interesting to me, I'll, you know, ask for a connection. And um, if we get to connect, I'll do a lot of um, chatting back and forth and eventually um, getting on the phone with people to just ask questions. I think um, networking is, is so important. Yep. And has COVID changed your networking strategy at all? Has it made it oh, easier yeah. because people expect it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has. Um, you know, funny enough, um, you know, with COVID now, it has for some reason made my connections a lot um, easier. People are just seem to be, you know, more um, responsive. Maybe a lot of it is because a lot of people are working from home and have more time. Um, but, you know, the social media sites, like LinkedIn, um, social organizations, um, that you can become a part of um, and connect with people. It's just been, it's been much easier um, now and now with COVID in play. Oh, that's great. And then I, I like your thought about, you know what, if there's a course that you want to take to develop yourself, you invest in yourself, right? That's investment in right. your future and your own. Um, when you look at the younger generation, is there a skill set or attribute that you think is important for them to develop or a skill set that you're excited for them to bring to CBP, to your workforce? Yeah, so, you know, younger people, um, they have so much to offer. They're very mm -hmm. energetic and, you know, um, they learn quickly. They're very resilient. Um, I think, you know, for younger people, I think, you know, um, working in teams, um, is something that, um, you know, is, 
is important, right? Being able to work in teams and develop relationships um, in, in any career um, that they go into. And so, um, yeah, you know, I think, I think um, for, the, for the younger generation, I know, you know, with my two sons um, being millennials, they are like firecrackers and they just run in all different directions at a moment's notice. And a lot of times I also have to, I always have to remind them about, um, hey, you know, not all, not everything is always individualized, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, te building team skills is so important, you know, um, team skills and open communication, good communication are such important things, um, you know, skills to learn and master for any career. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. Before the pandemic, you must have had a long list of IT projects that were in the, in the works. And then with the onset of the pandemic, um, it must have, did it force you to reprioritize? And if so, how, how did you do all of the reprioritization? Yeah, and you know, there was quite a bit of reprioritization and, and um, you know, COVID, of course, COVID was um, the root of those prioritizations. Um, but it was really around, once COVID hit and the pandemic hit, it was around, um, you know, the focus was really around our workforce. How do we make our workforce, how do we keep our workforce safe while at the same time productive? And so um, very early on um, in the early stages of the pandemic, you know, IT really had to shift our resources around um, enabling mm -hmm. our people with technology and or enabling whatever technology they had to be able to connect remotely back into the organization um, and still be able to work. And so it really, you know, once COVID hit, like I said, everything just focused back to people, mm -hmm. um, whether it was our employees or our customers, right? It's, it's how do we keep our employees working safely, but at the same time, how do we keep delivering services for our customers? And, and so really that those two became the focus of technology and, and driving priorities um, mm -hmm. over the last several months. I imagine like all the departments calling you and each one having their own priorities <laughs> and you having to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, and it was, you know, um, time was of the essence. Um, you know, when, when, when the pandemic hit, it was, a, it was a gentle and kind reminder how mm -hmm. time is so valuable and so important. And, um, you know, we, we managed to everyone's um, request. We did the best that we could. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to get everyone, um, you know, uh, outfitted with technology and and working from home mm -hmm. uh, or in the office or mobily, however they needed to. Um, and so, you know, we were fortunate. We were fortunate that when we had the inventory to be able to um, enable our employees um, to continue working and working productively. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a, a good question from Ellen. What does success mean to you? Oh. <laughs> you know, um, for me, it's, um, it's making, I think for me, success means um, that I've been able to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I've been able to make a difference in anything that I do and, I, and, and people, and because of that difference, um, either people um, or, or anyone, um, any of the recipients of that, of that change, um, it, you know, that it has a positive effect and positive impact. Um, you know, and so for me, I, I think that's what success looks like. It's, you know, being contributing to change, to good change and, um, and making a difference, whether it's at work, at home, or mm -hmm. even, um, you know, in the community. Yeah, no, that's great. And then um, how can women technologists be a better role model for future generations? Right? We all lift each other up. You lift me up. So. Yeah. Yeah, what can other technologists, what can women technologists do? I think, you know, really be available. Um, you know, um, mm -hmm. be a, a net, you know, a resource to other women. Um, share our experiences, um, you know, talk story, you know, even um, participate in events such as this and sharing our experiences um, with other women. Um, you know, that, that are in this, in this space or want to be in this space and want to continue growing in this space. Mm -hmm. I think um, we all have something to offer mm -hmm. each other. Um, and, you know, just through peer sharing and networking and, and um, encouraging, you know, encouraging each other to, to, you know, 
don't give up, you know, keep going, stay committed, um, work hard. Um, I think a lot of it is, um, and then, you know, appreciate the things you do well, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Try to keep the self-criticism at bay and, and, yeah. and celebrate the, the good things, right? And the accomplishments. And I'm still learning that. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. I think, you know, if we can be available to other women, um, to lean on and, and, and help, I think, um, uh, I think that's very important. Yeah, no, I think that's great. This weekend I was talking to some college students who were able to start and build a business over the summer, which I thought was amazing. And I was like, wow. oh, would you guys be, <laughs> would you guys be willing to be mentors? They're like, well, what do we have to share? I was like, Exactly that, right? You all have something to give back. And I think it's that acknowledgement and right. the pride. Right, um, here's right. Good, here's another good question for you, Adrian. What advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, gosh, probably not going to technology, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, um, I guess, you know, for me, um, my younger self would be, um, you know, maybe um, getting, you know, going further into education. I think one of the things while I got to my bachelor's, um, you know, there were so much more education aspirations that I had and, and, you know, life and other things just got in the way. But if you have goals, like for me, I would have told myself to, you know, um, hold on, you know, to family and, and other things and really focus on myself um, mm. in terms of my professional career. Um, technology has just been awesome. It's been wonderful. I've learned so much. Um, and so, you know, really it's, it's, you know, just, you know, prioritizing myself and my career journey first. Um, mm. And, you know, I guess better prioritization of my career journey and my uh, professional aspirations. Mm -hmm. well, that makes sense. Um. <laughs> It seemed like you were very focused in your career. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a, I know that Central Pacific Bank is focused on workforce development and, and different areas to support the future of Hawaii. Um, are right. there internships for the bank? Does the bank give internships? And then specifically in information security, how does somebody get into the cybersecurity arena? Yeah, so, so the bank does do, we do have um, summer internship programs. Um, for sure, we have summer internship programs. And I think, um, you know, in terms of longer term internship programs, it's something that, you know, I'd have to follow up with our human resources department. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, w the bank does do a lot of investment in mm -hmm. summer internship programs. And, you know, the leadership, um, senior leaders are able to um, work with our human resources department to say, hey, you know, we'd like to take on some some internships um, for the summer and in, in the different areas. Um, and even if in our cybersecurity, you know, we have such a great team of cybersecurity professionals um, led by Manny Edmondson, mm -hmm. who is very experienced in this, in this, in the cybersecurity and information security arena. And he is such a great resource. Um, and, you know, um, you know, and, and with all of his experience, he'd be, you know, a great mentor for anyone um, mm -hmm. in, in that, that's considering that space. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Adrian, what do you do in your spare time when you have it? <laughs> um, rest. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I try to rest as much as I can. Just like I said, you know, technology is so demanding and we do a mm -hmm. lot of our work after hours. Um, but honestly, um, I, you know, now, you know, work in, working remotely, especially, mm -hmm. um, it's provided me a lot of time for myself. And mm -hmm. so, you know, time that I use um, in, in traffic, I now use as my um, time for exercising or getting out and being outdoors and, and just, you know, um, mental health, you know, mental and physical health. And so I enjoy outdoors. I enjoy walking. I enjoy, um, you know, talking story with people. Um, and then, you know, other than that, I, I do, I love to do a lot of reading, um, whether it's um, leadership books or mm. just, you know, just um, 
storybooks. I, I just enjoy reading, you know, anything interesting um, in the news. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and, and those are generally you? my quiet times. Mm -hmm. What book are you reading now? I'm not reading anyone in particular right now. Mm -hmm. um, mostly I am doing a lot of research in, um, you know, technology and, and other things, but no specific book right now that I'm reading. So a lot of white papers <laughs> right before bed. A lot bed. of white papers. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of white papers for sure. <laughs> Lena has a question for you. Do you have a cadence that you sure. follow when you're setting goals to ensure that they're met, such as writing them down, telling someone to Oh, keep yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, definitely writing them down. And, you know, a lot of times things will come to me in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I would jump up. I always have a notepad right next to my bed and I'll jump up and I'll write it down. Um, and I'll share it a lot with um, people, you know, peers in the bank to say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've been thinking about this goal. Lean in, the women from our lean in circle. Um, and just, just peers across the bank that in relationships that I built, you know, just to say here, here's, here's something that I'm thinking about. Or maybe it's family members or um, just friends outside of the bank that, you know, I'll chat with. But yes, I'll write it down and, and I'll share it with someone. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll do check-ins every so often. Or they'll check in with me or I'll ask them to check in with me just to kind of keep me on, on top of, uh, you know, on top of the, the goals that I've been setting for myself. And, um, you know, and, and then, but, you know, yeah, pretty, that's pretty much what I do in terms of, of my goal cadence. Mm -hmm. And then I, I know that there's one other fun thing that you do at home because, um, so I, I asked Adrienne <laughs> for a lot of advice about raising children because her sons are, they just sound very amazing to me. Um, and you share that you do game night. <laughs> we do we do we do and you know it's um since the pandemic hit like i said you know the pandemic has definitely um, reminded us about how important time is how important family is and so um it was just a general reminder of the simple things and so um one of my sons live in colorado and one is still here um on island with us and so you know we make it a point to get together and do game nights sometimes we'll do game nights that's just locally here. We try to do game nights where we can engage my son virtually. Um, that's in Colorado and, and it's competitive. It's competitive <laughs> and it's fun. And, um, but you know, it's just, you know, we try to block at least an hour and we'll set aside mm -hmm. an hour of game night time. And just for us, just to, to decompress and have fun and, mm -hmm. you know, just to, to just constantly reconnect, you know, just at, at a family level. <laughs> no, I yeah, my awesome. sons. I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy that my sons, you know, being 24 and 26, going to be, you know, 25 and 27, still want to do game night with, you know, with us. <laughs> yeah, that's why I always ask you for advice. <laughs> How? What am I doing wrong? What do I have to do? <laughs> uh, here's another interesting one. If you weren't in IT, what field would you be in? You know, um, growing up, I always wanted to be. Um, a chef. <laughs> ah. I, I love cooking. And honestly, I mean, that's, that's really where I thought I would have been going um, into, mm -hmm. you know, cooking and, and culinary school. And, and honestly, you know, um, the only reason why I didn't um, was because my dad was so fascinated with computers. And, oh. um, you know, even in, it, you know, as, as, you know, computer illiterate as he was, he was just fascinated with computers and he, taught, he used to talk about computers and, and just tech things all the time. And he was, he, okay, he was a federal worker um, for Pearl Harbor. Didn't touch a computer, didn't know what a computer, but he was just fascinated with technology. And I think that was my persuasion to, to move into the technology arena as, a, as opposed to pursuing um, a culinary <laughs> profession. But don't get me wrong, I still love cooking. Uh, I still do a lot of it, and I enjoy it. <laughs> I love eating. That's why we're such good friends. <laughs> um, I, I, I said to the audience that I always ask you for advice. So one of the questions is, um, do you have advice on, or best practices on how to balance work and raising a family? 
Oh, you know, my best advice is, um, you know, try, you know, don't feel like you have to do it on your own. If you need help, ask for help. Don't be embarrassed by it. Don't be ashamed of it. Um, you know, I've had to ask for help many, many times um, in, in my life, in my journey. Um, and, you know, again, you know, just don't be afraid of asking for help. Build your, your circle of um, resources, your circle of strength in, in helping you to, um, you know, in helping you through that journey. But yeah, I mean, don't ever be afraid of asking for help and don't feel like you have to do it alone. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, and thank you, everyone, for the questions. Um, before we let Adrian go, there's one final question. Give us one word you would like to leave the audience with today. Yes. Um, so for me, um, it, it would be self-compassion. And, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, don't beat yourself up. Learn, you know, I, I've always said, you know, my biggest thing for me was self-criticism. That was, has been my challenge um, throughout my entire journey. And so self-compassion is something that resonates with me, something that I just learned recently through a lean-in circle. And, and it really resonated with me. And, and I'm working hard on this in terms of learning to obsess about good things and about accomplishments as opposed to beating myself up about things that I think I could have done better. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, you know, celebrate the good things, be obsessed about the good things that you've done, be obsessed about all the good things and accomplishments that you've managed, um, you know, to, to accomplish. And, um, but learn self-compassion and, and, you know, and um, be thankful, be thankful for you, be thankful for the things that you do. And I think, um, you know, I'm going to continue working on self-compassion and um, for myself and, mm -hmm. and we'll see, you know, how that goes, but it's yeah. something that is new for me and I'm still learning. Oh, thank you. That is so important. I think um, with all the demands in life that we yes. forget that part of it, right? Everything else seems to come first. So I, right. I appreciate exactly. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adrian, for taking the time to speak with us today. We learned a Thank lot. Thank you, Michelle. Thank then, you. It's been an honor and a privilege oh, to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And then Adrian also did an event with True earlier this month where she shared AI for Call Center solution that she developed at CBP. If you're interested in learning about that, please check it out at hec.org slash true under event recaps. And you can see more of Adrian. <laughs> um, <laughs> We wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and we look forward to amazing work you do at Central Pacific Bank. For all attendees, this session has been recorded. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Adrian. For all attendees, this session has been recorded, and we'll share it with you, so keep a lookout in your inboxes. There's also a survey link in the chat box, so we appreciate if you could complete the survey so we can craft better content for you going forward. Next month, we will be talking to the fabulous Julie Yamamoto from Surfco Pacific. If you've heard of Carhui service, you'll definitely want to hear from Julie herself. Thank you again for joining us. Take care and be safe. Bye.